Hey, Ellen. What's up, babe? Who do you think would win in a fight? The Monk Dogs or the Ninja Cats? I don't know. Let's find out in Kung Fu Fight. Hi, guys. Uh, before we start talking about the game, I just want you to look at this. Look how adorable this game is. Look at the color palette, the cute animals. Even the little tracker here is a tiny little bone. I mean, it just doesn't really get cuter than that. Okay, so Kung Fu Fight is a deck building one-on-one -on -one combat card game. That's a mouthful. Um, the game is played where per round you're choosing three cards to go up against your opponent's three cards. Um, the cards each have um, an ability on them, which you can only access and activate if you choose that card as your leader per the round. Um, the game ends when one of the win conditions is met at the end of the resolve phase. Before Randy steals the show, I'm gonna break down the anatomy of one of these adorable little cards. Here up in the corner is your AP, your attack power. Down here is the name, and I think that is pronounced Hua. I'm so sorry if that's not correct. And as I said before, here is his special ability. I could only activate that ability if I chose him for my leader. So let's tell you more about the game. In Kung Fu Fight, there are four phases in a round. In the prepare phase, you will place three war cards face up in the arena. And these are the cards that you will be battling for as one of your rewards for uh, defeating your enemy in the different arenas. There are a few different kinds of cards here. Uh, these are like various ability cards that will happen that will give you either SP or other benefits. Here we have Return. Your opponent loses 2 SP. Take back all your animal cards back into your hand. We have a Mushroom. You can put one Mushroom on your side of this arena. You gain 1 AP. So that's just like a permanent that you get every round. You'll be able to put one Mushroom out and get an additional VP. Or excuse me, AP. Break. Reduce your opponent's SP based on the difference between your AP. So if you have 0 or 2 more AP than the other person, they lose 1 and then, for instance, seven more, they would lose five. So there's a whole bunch of these, including some of these, like, mercenary-type cards, in which uh, these are functioning the same as the cards that you start with, and they are cards that can go to either team. So you put these three cards out at random, and the winner of each one of those arenas will end up getting those cards. During the plan phase, you will pick anywhere from zero to three cards to put out, because that is your starting card limit. Now your card limit can change up to five, uh, but we'll touch on that here in a little bit. You can play anywhere from one to three arenas. Now we mentioned the three different cards there, which are the arenas. So you can place up to three cards, as I mentioned, in three separate arenas. You could put three cards in one arena. You could do any kind of combination between these arenas, and that's all done secretively. And after you're done, you'll reveal your cards and figure out who the winner is of each of the three arenas. Whatever card you put on top of any given arena is called your leader. Ellen touched on that if you remember. And that is when you get to also activate the text ability. So we have Raihu here. When you play Raihu to an arena, you get to place one of those tokens on each of the other two arenas. So he comes along with two tokens that you get at the beginning of the game. And that gives you an additional two AP on the other two arenas. We have another one here. We have Hikaru. After the combat is resolved, you gain three of these temporary weapons. Now these weapons are a one and done. You put them on a card, it increases that attack value by one, and then you discard it out of the game. When you've decided on what your team is going to be, you will reveal your player screen and then resolve each of the three arenas. So these have these cute little paw prints for Arena 1, Arena 2, and Arena 3. You then resolve each one of the arenas one by one. So I have nothing in here, whereas Ellen has a 2. So she's going to automatically win that. And she'll be able to take that reward card directly into her hand and play it even in the very next round. In this one here, it's 3 to 4. But let's take a look and see if she actually wins or not. Uh, she has, if your VP is greater than your opponent's VP... You gain 2 AP in this combat. So we're at 0 each, so that won't apply here. If this is, if you win this combat, you gain 
four of those temporary weapon tiles. So she would win this one also, in which she would take the break card. Now she will reduce your opponent's SP on the difference between your AP. So if it's zero to two, since we both have zero, I would go down one SP on that track. Finally, we have a tie here of four to four. And this is when resolving this combat, I may add one to four of these temporary weapon tiles to the Serena. I happen to start with those because I am the ninja cat. So I could put one of those tokens on here and then make it a five and win that arena. This arena would give me boom, which is put this card in front of you. And then the more of these boom cards that I collect, I will reduce the number of SP from my opponent. You track your spirit points and victory points on this round tracker right here. Now this is your victory points. It's an odd little track because you can see it just keeps going round and round. But there is a reason for that I'll get to. The SP here, as you lower SP of the certain player, that their token goes down. And when they pass certain thresholds, they will be able to have additional cards that they can play per round. So for instance, if I'm here at 08, I will now be able to play up to four cards during that prepare phase. If I get all the way down to four, I can have five cards. If you have an instance where your teams are tied, so here is a two and a one to equal three and three on this side where the text ability does not change that number at all, then you have a draw. And that is, again, determined by individual arenas. And then you actually will leave that reward card there for the next round. And in the next prepare phase, when you are refreshing these other cards, then you will add to this. So now when you win that arena, you'll have two or more cards to be able to win. In addition to winning in each of the arenas, you will also go up one victory point. Going back to this little funky round tracker, you can see that you're going to be chasing each other kind of around and around this track. So it's not a matter of how many victory points you get throughout a game. It's how many victory points you are ahead of the other person. If you are ever four or more victory points ahead of your opponent at the end of the resolve phase, then you will win. So this is just like a chasing kind of mechanic, which I think is actually quite neat. The other way that the game ends is if your spirit points go down to zero, you will lose and obviously the other person will win. At some point during the game, you are going to need to be able to pick up your cards so that you can play them again because you're just not going to have enough cards throughout the game. To do that, you pick up the chef or you play the chef card as your leader. In this instance, it's Hakuto for the Ninja Cats. Hakuto must be played as the leader. In the refresh phase, spend one food token and take back all your used animal cards to your hand. Now, the food tokens are what is right here. So you have three different food tokens. You also have a delicacy token. That comes into play various times. But you will spend a food token, so you flip it over into the eaten side, and then you are able to draw all your cards back into your hand. You can only do that a maximum of three times. As you can see, you only have three food tokens. And that, my friends, is Kong for Fight. That was an interesting move. Would you Thank call you. that a ninja cat move or a monk dog move? That's obviously a ninja cat. Yeah, How can it you was, not tell the it difference? It was that bad. You're right. Oh, okay. Monk dogs for life. Maybe. So, this game feels kind of mean. And, I mean, it's one-on-one -on -one combat. Like, hello so you that's what you're wanting in this game you definitely get it but you feel like cute doing it because you get to say these adorable names and get these like abilities and you're flipping like sashimis i think right like little like the little fish that they're eating and stuff like on the cats for the and cat then the, the dogs have cat. dumplings yes oh the dogs have done that's so right <laughs> this is what i mean the dogs have dumplings lots of neat little details <laughs> it's a really well done game the component quality is very high is. all the player components are very thick cardboard yeah. The tokens are these nice little bones and yeah. shurikens. They're cut really nice. They're just good quality. It's a good package. It's a good package. Um, I will say the the thing we kind of annoyed with is that the card finish is like matte, right? It's definitely matte. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like matte from my foundation, <laughs> but I don't know about it on a card. It gets a little like sticky or something it does Such a now you don't really pick. shuffle in this game because you no. have access to all your cards but even fanning those cards out in front of you it's kind of you're like doing them like one by one by one <laughs> and to be able to even like look at them a minor nitpick but it is 
I don't know. Is Whatever. it worth it to have that kind of finish on the cards? I don't know. I would say it's not because I really just want to fan my cards out. Yeah, I guess you could sleeve them. Yeah, that's true. You could sleeve them, could but sleeve then they them. are no longer but then that they're matte shiny. <laughs> Get extra sparkly, extra shiny sleeves <laughs> with matte black backs, so that you can't uh, so you can't even see, can't the, even art. see the artwork. <laughs> Oh, anyways. It's a good package. I, we've played a number of these kind of direct two-player yes. combat games. It is similar to other games sure. like this. Does it really do anything different? No, not really. Okay, so if you yeah. already have a game that's kind of like this, mm -hmm. I don't really see any reason to pick it up. If you don't, I think it is one of the better offerings out there. Hmm. They have a lot of the abilities on there that you can add tokens to them at the end of the round to, you know, just edge over and beat your yeah. opponent. Uh, you Those get to nice. draw more cards out as you're doing worse in the game. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like a little catch-up mechanic. So there's one or two little catch-up mechanics that work well in the game, too. Do we like it? Like I said, I like it, but it really depends on if you have one of these games or not. I just don't want too many of these type games in my collection because... It's not healthy for me. <laughs> right. Even though it's supposed to be direct combat, if you have any problem with a take that game, even though I don't consider this a take that because it it's like you it. have to take that to each other, you know, when you're really trying to load up on a um, spot and then you play the card that says, well, if you are the lowest card by so many points, you automatically yeah. win. Then you're like, oh, geez, I just spent all this time or all this, you know, power on one thing just to have it slip through my fingers mm. if you're opposed to that this game will not do you any no. favors no but it's cute it is <laughs> all right guys we will see you on the next review bye